The two ways of taking pictures underwater using whatever camera you use, you can either use lights or you can use natural light. I'm going to start off with the most basic setup because some people, they just buy a camera, put it in a housing, and that's all they want to invest to start off. They say, I will buy this camera, I will see if I like it, and if I like it, I will further develop my equipment. But when you first start off, everybody starts off with only a camera and a housing. So with only that, I would like to show you what you can do without the strobes, without the torches, without any additional things. Just using the camera and the housing, what are the limitations and how far can your photography go? So, when you first buy your camera, you put it in the housing, you've seen a million pictures on Facebook, you've seen a million pictures online, and you say, I will do this. And the first time you go diving and you take pictures and you come back and your pictures all look like this and you say, something is wrong. There's a problem with my Canon. I have to go back to the shop and complain. Why are my pictures like this? I saw Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. D. They all use exactly the same camera. Why are my pictures like this? There must be something wrong with the sensor. So this is how people normally start off. Feeling like something is not right. So. What people need to understand is people who go out and they shoot and they take nice pictures and they post it online, they don't get those results on their first day or their second day or their third day. People don't buy a camera, go for a workshop, go diving and expect amazing pictures. Imran Ahmad, myself, everyone else who you see on the board of speakers, they didn't get great pictures after two weeks of diving with their new camera because the shop told them, you need this camera, this housing, this light, this torch. And then you need this software and you will be amazing. That's not it. That is not it. You need to be able to know how. The people who are listed as speakers here at the show, they have all the information and they all started here. So when people look at their pictures and say, my goodness, Tim, why are your pictures like that? My pictures used to be like this. What brought me to the next level was training and knowledge. So this is what I'd like to share with you guys today. I have had six to seven years only of shooting as compared to some other masters who have been in the business for 20 years. But I have had six to seven years of business diving almost every single day using a very simple setup. So when there are problems or there are outcomes that you find not right, I can explain why. So let's start off with this. This is what people normally expect to get when they first get their camera. Oh, something is wrong. Using only the sun. Because I say, today's talk will be on the bare basic of setups. A camera, a housing, and later on I will show you what a lens brings to the picture. If you are diving and you do not have strobes and you do not have torches, then you are using only this. Wherever you are, you have to remember, this is the light you are using. If you are diving inside a cave, you have to realize how this light affects your subject inside the cave. You need to know. I am diving now and the only light that I am using for my camera is the sun. This guy is getting a lot of sun. This guy is not getting sun. This guy is in the shadow cast. You need to know this is the light you are using and if you want to be able to get good pictures, you must understand how to make it happen. Another factor you need to realize that when you are taking pictures underwater, the water does have its own little bit of color. If I gave you a white light and I shone it through a glass of slightly blue or slightly green water, depending on where you're diving, and shine it onto a snowman, the snowman, what color is a snowman normally? We all know a snowman is white. But if you take a white light, this representing the sun in this picture and shine it through some blue water this will be slightly bluish this is 10 meters of water 
this is 20 meters of water. Does it get more blue or less blue? It gets more blue. You go to 30 meters of water and you take the sun and you shine it through 30 meters of water, this becomes very blue. Yes? A little bit of simple logic, a little diagram to explain to you why the deeper you go, the pictures get more blue. You can't expect it to not be blue. You're shining light through some blue or some green water. So, if you don't want to do anything to that, use the blue to your advantage. You can. So on a very basic camera, no lens, no light, no torch, no strobe, no nothing. And I don't even want to edit this picture. Use the blue to your advantage. Shoot upwards, get silhouettes, because then you get a very, very interesting effect, which is blue and should be blue, yes? Use the blue to your advantage. There are a lot of discussions among the pros who use the very big setups. They go deep and they can even tell you at what meter is the blue best for this kind of shot. Because they know the deeper they go, it's a different tinge of blue. Explaining to you just how to use the blue if you don't want to do anything else. Now, the sun going through 10 meters of blue water, 20 meters of blue water, 30 meters of blue water, your snowman is blue. This is what I want to explain to you now. There are a few ways to remove this blue. First of all, go back home, open it in any software you have, and make it black and white. If you think you want it black and white, why not? This will still look nice on the wall, no? This will still be, wow, when you show it to your auntie or your grandma, okay? Second way of removing the blue or the green. I did this at about 27 meters in Thailand. The sun is coming all the way down through the water, which is slightly greenish. So what happens to my whole picture is the, it's green. Your second solution is to bring in lights. Lights bypass all that blue that you have gone through and you bring the light from where you are. So what happens? In a picture that's all green, because the water is a tinge of green, bringing lights in will give you color to whatever the light affects. Now you are at that level. This. Throw your light onto something nearby and let everything be blue. So be it. You cannot light up infinity. There's no way. Only light up what you want and leave everything else blue. Example. A visu vi visualization of what actually happens. You go all the way down deep. If you didn't bring down a light, this whole picture will be green. You put in the light and whatever the light touches brings you color. In this sense, this picture is just to show you. Now, because I said I would like to talk about no lights in my first topic, let me show you your second option. Natural light. This is no strobe, no flash, no torches, no need to edit. Natural light. Tell the camera, remove all this blue for me, and the camera will do it for you. This is natural light photography. This is natural light photography. This is natural light photography. This is at 23 meters, still giving you the color. It's not green with no flash or nothing. This is natural light photography. This is natural light photography. Natural light. Natural light, natural light. Remember, white light going through blue water, making your snowman blue. You can put a torch light here, right here, bypassing all this. Leave the sun to do what it does but bring in your own new torch to light up your snowman so that all that blue disappears. How do you do this? 
in your camera, there is the white balance. When you first start off, people will say, use the underwater mode, which is very good. Developers of cameras, they build the underwater mode there, and it best suits the built-in built flash. So if you're gonna use the little fish mode, turn on the flash, developers build their cameras to work best underwater mode with the built-in flash. Or you can scroll all the way through until you see a custom white balance or manual white balance button. Now, bringing it there is not it. Bring it there to tell the camera, use the custom white balance and then you have to custom the white balance. Many people make this mistake. They go there, they put it to custom white balance and they shoot, 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 shoot and they say, hey, it looks terrible. Yes, custom white balance is your selection, but what is the custom? You need to set it. Find these words in your compact camera and then you tell the camera what is white. Now the camera only know, needs to know what white color is. Once he knows what white color is, it will evaluate the red, the blue, the green, the yellow, and he will adjust everything for you. He only needs to know which one is white. Some people say try the sand, some people say use your palm. Yes, these are good fixes when you don't have something white. I always die with something white. It does not have to be a white slate. When we're on the boat and somebody's asking me how you do this, I said, hang on a minute. We look for your cup noodles. Eat this first. They eat it, cut the cup noodles. It's a little white plastic sheet. Just put it in your pocket. When you want to evaluate, take out that plastic, custom your white balance, and you're back into white balance. You need to know what white is. The camera needs to know. It will adjust everything else for you. Custom white balance, custom white balance, custom white balance. Now, for those who have already ventured into custom white balance, I would like to give you a little deeper insight into custom white balance because custom white balance is not just taking your camera, putting it against something white and setting it and then shooting away. You need to know the only source of light you're using for custom white balance is the sun. You need to know where you are. If you're in the shadow of the tree, you need to set your custom white balance here. You can't be swimming out here where the sun is hitting you directly, custom white balancing in here and moving into the shadow and shooting. Your colors will be off. You cannot set your custom white balance here, come out into the sun and shoot. It will be too red. If you set it here and go in here, your colors will be a bit green or blue. If you set it here and come out into the sun, your custom will be very red. You need precision. Biggest mistake that I've seen with people doing is if this is the sun, and I'm in the water, and I see a nudie branch there, I take out my white slate and I set it like this, because this is how we dive. What is happening now? I'm in the shadow. That's the sun. My body is blocking the sun and hitting the white slate. And then I go and I shoot the turtle. I have set my custom white balance in my own shadow and I'm shooting the turtle outside in the open. That turtle is going to be too red. You need to know, custom white balance, set it go in. Precision. This is going in depth a little bit to custom white balance for people who have already tried it. You need to know where you are. You need to remember that this is the only light you're using. You can't block it, set the white balance, then show it. It's not going to work. It's going to be off. <clears throat> this is the diagram. Set your white balance in the same hit that the sun is hitting your subject. Excuse the drawing, yeah? I did this myself. If you're shooting in the shadow of a rock and your nudie branch is here, you set your white balance this way. You remove it and you shoot it, you will get it right. Same. 
say, this is going to be wrong. Eh? You are under the boat, it's blocked, you are in your own shadow, then you lift your camera and you shoot this guy, this is going to be too red. Precision and white balancing. I'm outside. I set my white balance and I come in for the kill. You need to know, it doesn't work. Set the white balance, it's custom, it will work. Something's wrong with the camera, it's wrong. You need to know how white balancing works. Same, custom it outside, swim in and take the shot. Okay, few points here. The custom white balance is done before every shot. Before every subject would be good, yeah? So if you are at 12 meters, you go in and you custom your white balance and you shoot this guy, and then you see there's a turtle be below, and you drop down to 20 meters and you start shooting the turtle, you're off again. The water column has changed. There is now more blue water from where you last set your custom white balance. If you were at 20 meters and you custom your white balance and you shot a turtle and you swam up because there was a cuttlefish up at 10, the water column has changed. You will set your custom white balance again. If not, it will become again very red. So, this is it. Where your subject is. Here's another thought. You saw a turtle down there and it's swimming and so is your friend. And you thought, I want to shoot a nice picture with my friend and the turtle side by side from the top. Your friend is at 20. You drop to 20, set your white balance, come back up to 15 and shoot them. You will be right again. The custom white balance depends on where your subject is. If you're shooting upwards, not really the best. I don't, I don't agree with this. The reason being is because if I'm at 20 and I custom my white balance and then I drop, okay, if I'm at 10, 10 meters, I custom my white balance, I drop down to 20 and I shoot the turtle at 10. The turtle color will be right, but as it goes higher, you will see the sun in the top, a red ball. This doesn't work. So if you're shooting upwards, I don't normally like to use the custom white balance. I put it into the underwater mode or even auto mode. Shoot the silhouette, let it be blue with the silhouette of a turtle. Custom white balance, custom white balance. Okay. No manual mode, doesn't work very nicely with custom white balance. Works very good on A or P. What happens in A, P, or S, or T? You control one factor and the camera handles the other for you. I want F2.8, the camera is in charge of the sh shutter speed. I want F8, the camera is in charge of the shutter speed. You choose the A, the camera handles the rest. If you're shooting on shutter speed, you choose. I want 1 over 100 and the camera chooses the aperture for you. He finds that good balance for you, which works very good with custom white balance. If you're shooting on manual, the camera doesn't really understand how this custom white balancing is working because it seems too dark for the camera or it seems too bright for the camera. So these are the two best modes that work for the custom white balance. You control the ISO, the smaller the number, the better, of course. And you control the, e, uh, the EV. This is a simple plus or minus where you said, I want it to be a little bit brighter or I want it to be a little bit darker. This is your fine tuning. When you're shooting on P or A, you control one factor, maybe the A, and you tell the camera, A, darker, A, brighter. He handles the rest for you. P, you just handle brighter or darker. He will handle everything. Okay, just showing you a little bit more about custom white balance and what it can do. These are taken custom white balance with a close-up lens.
To wrap up, the simplicity of custom white balance where no lights are used, white balancing gets you the colors, ISO, the smaller the number, the better quality the picture. However, with a smaller number on ISO, you can't shake and your subject can't shake. ISO, remember, the smaller the number, the higher the quality, the more stable you and your subject need to be. Just very simple explanation for you. Exposure value, plus or minus. Normally, minus. Remember when you're shooting and the picture is slightly too dark, when you move it to your camera, you can make it brighter. If you're shooting slightly too bright, when you bring it to your camera, you can't make it darker. What is too white cannot come back. What is too dark can come back. So always choose slightly darker. Don't go for the perfect or don't go for the slightly brighter, no. Those things when you move to the camera and you say, oh, it's too bright, let's try to darken it. It doesn't work, right? Just to show you a few more, these are all custom white balance pictures. You don't need to Photoshop, you don't need to Lightroom, you can get this on the camera. So when you go down with just your camera and your housing with no additional lights and you tell people, I can do it, they say, really? Show them. Can be done. Of course, don't try custom white balance on a night dive, you know? This is not gonna work. You need the sun. Natural light photography works with the sun. 